If you're a fan of military history and visiting battle sites, or have seen the Steven Spielberg movie Band of Brothers starring Tom Hanks, you might like to travel to Baston in Belgium. In this podcast, I'm taking you on location in the Ardennes region of Belgium to La Roche in Ardennes, a strategic location during World War II's Battle of the Bulge, and to Baston, where history is brought to life at battle sites, a memorial and museum, and in the woods. It was the worst winter that in, in years in Belgium, so they were uh, knee deep in snow during most of the battle in frozen ground. They had to dig in in the woods. Sometimes more difficult to just withstand the weather conditions and the fighting. It's the Travels with Darley podcast, where traveling with the locals is a window into history, culture, cuisine, and why being curious about the world can be so rewarding. Thanks for being curious with me and listening to this podcast. Please subscribe and check out other global journeys with me through my PBS and streaming series, also called Travels with Darley. Just a few miles away from the Luxembourg border in Belgium, we're learning about history at Baston, where U.S. troops from the 101st Airborne Division and the 10th Armored Division were isolated and surrounded by German troops during World War II. They didn't give up, even during brutal winter conditions. Steven Spielberg's Band of Brothers is based on the experiences of Easy Company, one division from the 101st. Today, a museum and monument honoring the American soldiers who were wounded or killed during the Battle of the Bulge invites visitors from around the world to pay tribute to the men who lost their lives here. Martin Cunyon, an expert from the Baston War Museum, walks with me over to the Battle of the Bulge Monument, also known as the Martison Monument, built in the shape of a five-pointed star, representing the American Army. It's dedicated to the friendship and ties between Belgium and the United States. Construction of the site started in 1946. It's finished in the 1950s, which was pretty annoying for those who, who were building the site. In 1946, there were only 48 states in the United States. And then they, <laughs> they you know, had to add in Alaska and yeah, Hawaii. They, they had to add <laughs> Alaska and Hawaii where they could. So it's why it stands in the middle whereas the other states stay more or less in alphabetical order all around the star and the center of it. So it was, it was the big problem at the time. 1950s, they said, okay, let's find some space for those two extra states. <laughs> <laughs> so they decided to welcome them in. <laughs> yeah, welcome them in. Of course, they needed to, but, you know. Represent. Represent every, it was their will to represent each and every state on the sides of the memorial and also each and every unit that fought in the battle. So that you have on the outside. And That's a five-pointed star as you have on the American flag and as you, as you have on the, you had at the time on the vehicles, on the tanks and on the jeeps, which were a big symbol of the liberation for the Belgian people. That's why they wanted to keep this shape for the memorial. And why did they choose to build the memorial here on this spot? Uh, well, it's, a, it's basically a hill, so you have a good vantage point all around for the battlefield. So when you go up the memorial, you can see each and every villages, village where, where they was fighting and also the lines and where the divisions were. So it's basically because it's a vantage point. Then also the memorial took the name Martison because it stands on Martison Hill is the name of the place. And we have um, some kind of commemoration yeah. here. You have, you have a stone in the middle with a quote in Latin telling the, that the Belgian people remember the American liberators and the, the year 1950 when, uh, when it was finished. And I would imagine that a lot of Americans come to visit this site. Quite a lot of Americans. It's difficult to tell how many because, you know, it's not a pay site, so you go there freely. Uh, but we see a lot of Americans, especially when you have uh, Memorial Days. So when we go up to the top of this, we'll really have a 360 degree view. Yeah, of... you have a 360 view of all the battlefield. The only problem is at some point you have the trees that grew a bit too tall, but you see the whole battlefield, of course, wow. with maps on each point. This is neat. Know, giving this... you information. Yeah, very special. Yeah. yeah when, you'll see when we go further, you also have a crypt for religious memorials over there down, down the stairs over here, and another memorial for the uh, 101st day of war. 
that was, you know, built by a, a local guy. So, um, yeah, you have also the story on each column, telling from the start, so from the number one to the number ten, the whole Battle of the Bulge. In English, because it was a memorial to the Americans, it says, it tells everything about Bastogne and also a bit more about what happened around here. Must be neat to work at a place like this and kind of hear some of the stories yourself of course, firsthand. Of course, yeah, it was pretty neat, of course, to get to know those veterans. So in December, I met two that I will never forget. He had Eugene Gilbreth and Bobby Zumi, two veterans of the 101st Airborne who fought in the area. Uh, I can remember Mr. Gilbreth was shot in Noville just after after the the, the surround the, the encirclement of Bastogne was broken when they tried to retake the village. Took a bullet to his chest and the guy is still 92, is still standing. And when he shakes your hand, you know, it's so strong guy. Uh, you know, what do we sign to be in that shape at that age? <laughs> yeah, after you've gone through a battle like that. No, nah, I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't want to. <laughs> yeah. It was the worst winter that in, in years in Belgium, so they were uh, knee-deep in snow during most of the battle in frozen ground. They had to dig in in the woods. We were not allowed to make some fire uh, because they would be shelled by the Germans. So, you know, it was just freezing to death. So very, very hard for everyone Very, involved. very harsh conditions, very hard. This was even sometimes more difficult to just withstand the weather conditions and the fighting. And the fightings, they were so, you know, soldiers were getting shell over and over again, and they were fighting at very short distances. You have uh, witness accounts that you will see in the, mon in the museum of people telling there was a lot of hand-to-hand -hand fighting also in the villages when they needed to retake them. So it was a pretty nasty war around here. It was an, a battle in which the United States lost more men than during the Normandy landings. And you have to go back to Gettysburg to have such a you know, high number of victims in a single battle for the United States. So it was a key historical point. The names of all of the American units that were involved in the Battle of the Bulge lie in the exterior columns. Martin and I climb the spiral staircase to the top of the monument, where visitors can take in a panoramic view of the surrounding villages, woods, and countryside where the battle was fought. Right in front of us, you have uh, the Boisjac, so that's where the 506 of the 101st fought and other companies, of course. And that's where you can still visit today foxholes that were dug at the time and still standing there as uh, for people to remember where the soldiers were standing at the time. It's good to have places like this so we, we can remember yeah, this history can remember and, and, and not repeat it. Not repeat it, of course. Martin takes me down the road to visit the foxholes that Easy Company men dug into the ground during the winter of 1944. It's here that travelers get a deeper sense of how the battle played out. If you've seen Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg's Band of Brothers, you may recognize these woods. So we're here in Wajac, uh, between the villages of Foy and Visery. It was where the, the Americans held off the Germans. Visery was in American hands, whereas Foy had been taken by the Germans. And they never left this place, so they fought for, for weeks here. So you have to imagine, American soldiers were uh, lying in these foxholes that they had to dig in, uh, in the frozen ground to, to defend themselves from uh, German fire, so machine gun fire and artillery fire. And the Germans were just right over there. Yeah, they were uh, 100 yards away, just waiting for uh, a time to attack the American line. So you are on the front line right here. So, so not, not optimal conditions. Not to... optimal conditions, knee deep in snow. Uh, was not an, uh, so good equipment for the snow and it was pretty difficult for them, yeah. We head back over to the memorial to visit the Baston War Museum, where the story of the war is further personalized through a variety of interactive exhibitions. So this museum is maybe a bit less about facts and history, but more about the story for, for people to understand what war is and not to do those mistakes again. Also in the Ardennes region, just a 30-minute drive from Baston, you can visit La Roche and Ardennes, a strategic location during World War II's Battle of the Bulge. 
walking through this city is like walking through an open air museum with much history related to World War II and a medieval castle overlooking this charming European city. Much of the city was decimated during the war and walking around today, scars of the past remain. I stroll along the river and stop to see an M4A1 Sherman tank restored by the Belgian Cavalry Regiment and dedicated to the second and third U.S. Armored Divisions who helped liberate La Roche and Ardennes in January 1945 during the Battle of the Bulge. The Battle of the Bulge was Germany's last major offensive of the war and one in which there were tens of thousands of American casualties. A small museum at La Roche and Ardennes further depicts the battle and how it affected villages like this. It's meeting local experts and walking in the footsteps of soldiers and the villagers and townspeople in places like Baston and La Roche and Ardennes that helps further bring history to life and helps us learn from the past anew. I'm Darley Newman, and I appreciate you taking the time to learn with me here in Belgium. If you like to travel the world, please subscribe to the Travels with Darley podcast, where I take you around the world with locals as the guides.